Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a haptic equation. It's also called a septic equation, but this time I wanted to call it a haptic equation. So we have an equation that is of seventh degree, x to the seventh power plus five times x to the third power plus six is equal to zero. And we're going to be solving for x values. First of all, I want you to notice that all the powers here of x, except for the constant term, of course, are odd numbers. So that is very important. Let's go ahead and set f of x equal to x to the seventh power plus five x cubed plus six. Now, we're gonna go ahead and differentiate this. You know, a lot of times when we're solving polynomial equations, we want to check maxima, minima, any inflection points, where the graph is increasing, where the graph is decreasing, so on and so forth, to get a better idea about the shape and the nature. So I'm going to go ahead and differentiate this function. f prime is going to give me 7x to the 6th power plus 15x squared. The derivative of constant is 0, so the derivative of 6 is 0. Now notice that because we started off with odd powers, when we differentiate it, we got even powers, which makes sense. So this derivative is basically greater than or equal to 0 for all x values in the domain. And the domain is real numbers, of course. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if the derivative of a function is positive or on an interval where the derivative of the function is positive, then the function is increasing. Otherwise, it's decreasing. And that way you can kind of tell the maxima and the minima. But this function... It uh, fails to be negative, so it's always increasing, but at some point it's zero, so could that be a point where the function has a maximum or minimum? Well, the first derivative is not changing sign, so that's not going to happen. So let's take a closer look, differentiate this one more time, and that gives us 42x to the power 5 plus 30x. Now we can go ahead and set it equal to zero to find the critical points. And from here, of course, we could do the same thing with the first derivative and we would get zero as well and some other roots. Uh, what with this one, we can take out a 6x and inside we would have 7x to the fourth power plus 5. Now, when you set it equal to zero, 7x to the fourth power plus 5 is always positive, therefore it cannot equal zero. From here, we, get, we only get one solution. A root of the second derivative is going to be x equals 0. And if you look at this closely, for example, if x is positive, then the second derivative is going to be positive because 6 times positive. And if x is negative, then the second derivative is going to be negative. What is that supposed to mean? We have an inflection point. So x equals 0, we have an inflection point, which is where the concavity changes. So a function goes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. So that's called an inflection point and sometimes they'll call it a point of inflection. So we don't have any maxima or minima here, but notice that if you exclude the x equals zero value here, you're going to notice that f prime is always positive, therefore f of x is always increasing. At zero, we do have an inflection point. We'll talk about that. And I'm, I'm going to show you the graph of the function so you, you have a better idea about the visuals. All right, so once we establish that f of x is always increasing, we can say that there's only one root because a function that is always increasing, and obviously it's defined negative infinity to, to negative infinity to positive infinity over the set of real numbers, the domain and the range are both real numbers. So it's going to pretty much cover the whole uh, coordinate plane so it has to intersect the x-axis. Therefore, there is a, at least one solution. But in this case, there is only one solution because f of x is always increasing and it's going to intersect. So what is that solution? We can find it by inspection. But remember the two things that I told you before. We, we were doing some polynomial equations and I said that one of the first things that you check is the sum of the coefficients in a polynomial. The second thing you check is the sum of the even powers and the sum of the odd powers. And when they are equal, that means x equals negative 1 is a solution. When the sum of the coefficients is 0, that means x equals 1 is a solution. In this case, if you look at this, 1 plus 5 is equal to 0. I mean, did I say 0? 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. Therefore, the sum of the odds equals the sum of the evens, which means 
x equals negative 1 is a solution. And you can easily verify that because if you just plug in negative 1, you're going to notice that it is a solution because this is going to become 0. Awesome. The question is, what about the other roots? Of course, there's not going to be any other real roots, but can we at least factor this expression? Before I show you the graph of it, let me go ahead and show you how we can factor this haptic equation. So we're factoring a haptic now. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, could we, or ask, could we solve this problem using the haptic formula? Well, it doesn't exist. Uh, is there a quintic formula? No, it doesn't even exist. So we're starting with the fifth power, we have problem using a general formula. So there's no haptic formula, so we have to, if it's factorable, we factor it, or you can use approximations, numerical methods, so on and so forth. But we know x equals negative 1 is a solution, so I can write this as x to the 7th plus 1. So kind of like I'm going to split up the 6, and that makes sense because 6 can be written as 1 plus 5. And when I do that, uh, you can immediately see that this can be factored by grouping. x to the 7th plus 1 is a sum of two odd powers, so it's factorable. We can write this as x plus 1. The other factor is going to alternate x to the 6th minus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1. And th this one right here is 5 times x cubed plus 1. So we can kind of write it like this. And then x cubed plus 1 is a sum of two cubes. Therefore, we can factor it like this. x cubed plus 1 can be factored into x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. I use the formula a cubed plus b cubed. Let me go ahead and quickly write that down for you guys. a plus b multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared. And for those, we have formulas too, but I don't think we need to get into those. But in general, let me just tell you that if you have a to the n plus b to the n, and if n is odd, you can definitely factor this expression, and a plus b is going to be one of the factors. And the other factor kind of starts off like n a to the power n minus 1, and then you'll have a minus a to the power n minus 2 multiplied by b. So kind of like the binomial theorem without the binomial coefficients. The terms are going to alternate, powers of a are going to go down, and powers of b are going to go up. They'll balance out, so on and so forth. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and finalize this by taking out the common term x plus 1. If we do take it out, we get x plus 1, and the other one is going to be x to the 6th minus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th minus x cubed. And then x squared, from here I'm going to be getting uh, 5x squared, so that's going to become 6x squared. And then I should be getting uh, 5, negative 5x, so we have a negative x minus 5x, that is going to be a minus 6x. And then 1, and then I should be getting a 5 from here, that's going to become a 6. I just wanted to... I didn't want to take an excess step because that's fairly easy. You just take it out and simplify. So you can see one more time that x equals negative 1 is a solution. x plus 1 is a factor. The other factor, which is hexic, has no real solutions because we already established that this equation has one real solution, which means all the solutions are going to be complex. And pretty much they're going to be conjugates, uh, complex conjugates, therefore, this should be able to be written as a product of three quadratics whose roots are all non-real complex numbers. But, you know, we don't have a formula, we don't have a way to factor it, so don't worry about it. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now and we'll, f we'll finalize. Here's the graph of our function. As you can see, it is always increasing and at zero, we do have an inflection point. You can clearly see that, hopefully. Negative 1, 0 is a solution. That's what we found. And also, at zero, you can see that the concavity actually sharply changes. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.